Okay, let's get started. This is the final exam review for the CSS HTML class. And I have the exam right here in my hands. I'm not going to tell you everything that's on it. It is three pages long, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but it's all multiple choice, so it's not too bad. I put a little lecture up here called the final exam review lecture. It's actually kind of interesting. It's, it's both a kind of a checkpoint plus a little review of some of the things you're going to want to pay attention to um, for, the, uh, for the exam. So let's go through it, and then I'll talk about the exam a little bit. And that's all we're doing today, actually, so it'll be a short class. So for those of you who need some extra help with anything, I'll be available after the class to stick around to, to help you out with stuff. Um, so as I mentioned before, it's HTML and CSS, hence the name of the course. There's no, quest no questions at all on JavaScript. Nothing. This is not a JavaScript programming course, although we did have to do a few things for the programming assignments, or for the web assignments that dealt with JavaScript. You're not responsible for knowing any of those topics, those subject matters. So what do you need to know? Um, and if you haven't guessed already, the final exam schedule is out, so you can get it on bhacker.com. Runs for two weeks straight. You can take this exam anytime you want to take it. I'm and on a Monday, on the eighth or the following week, I believe it's the eighth. Is it the eighth next Monday? Yes. yes. Okay. What's the following one? The sixteenth? The fifteenth. Yes. <laughs> okay, I can do my math. Um, or you can take it on the Wednesdays, the next two Wednesdays, if you want. Eight o'clock in the excuse me, nine o'clock in the morning till uh, five o'clock at night. Don't show up at five. Take the test. Show up a couple hours before five. Allow yourself at least an hour. I'd say an hour and a half to two hours would be reasonable, actually. That way you don't have to rush. You'll probably finish this test. You'll probably finish in an hour or less, is what I'm thinking. So what are you going to need to know for the exam? Um, it is uh, worth 25 points, and it's only 22 questions. So you get three points uh, just for putting your name on the exam, which is good. So you only have to worry about 22 of the rest of the points. Uh, don't really have to get a pass, passing grade on it. Uh, here's some topics that you want to consider. And uh, you can download this lecture set and you can look at it and go through it as many times as you want. Uh, but what we're looking at is uh, obviously a basic definition of what HTML stands for, a basic definition, which is not on the slide, what CSS stands for. And uh, there are really only three questions, I believe, on CSS. Um, let me take another look here. No, there's four questions on CSS, and uh, one of them has to do with, and here's your bonus for showing up today or listening to this, one of them has to do with um, how, where you uh, use it. The, you know, remember the three different modes, the external, internal, inline, all those. So know that stuff, essentially. There's a question on that. Um, actually, this one says, uh, referring to an external style sheet. That's the blah, 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 re referring to an external style sheet. So it's a, definitely a question on an external style sheet. Um, where is the correct place, dot, 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 is a, and one of the other questions. Um, and uh, one of them actually has to deal with a, uh, a CSS uh, that's established for a table. It has something to do with a property on a table. So, and the, uh, the fourth, not to give you all the questions, <laughs> the fourth CSS question is, uh, <clears throat> has to do with, um, that's actually a hybrid question. It's not really a CSS question. It's more of a, more of a, more of an HTML. Well, it's more of a browser question. To make the width of a table adjust, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to do a table. So there's questions on tables. There's questions on uh, properties of tables, obviously. So, oh, you know what? I take it back. There is one question about JavaScript. What's the correct place to insert a JavaScript? Blah 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 blah. <laughs> so nothing on JavaScript itself as a language. However, using JavaScript in an HTML page is uh, is something you want to know about. In fact, using scripting languages in general and HTML mixing in is something interesting to, to remember. Um, okay, so let's go back to the slide here. What is HTML? The concept of the tags 
I'm not going to read you the slides. This is like a review, review from day one, which would be kind of boring for most, but you can go through this and kind of see these are the subject areas you want to be familiar with. Um, the concept of the tags, the concept of where they go, the opening and the closing tags. Um, the concept that contains, uh, in terms of these opening and closing arrows, the forward, you know, the forward slashes, the differences between the HTML and XHTML, in terms of that concept, we went over that in class. Um, the pairs of the tags, um, each web page is having the head, the body, the, so the different sections of the HTML page are important to kind of be familiar with. You're not going to be asked to, to write any code. These are all multiple choice questions. However, in the questions, you're going to see some code, and you're going to see A, B, C, D, or none of the above. <laughs> and it'll be something like, uh, uh, suppose you see these tags, dot, 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 um, would appear as, dot, dot, you know, you know, pick number A, B, C, would it be bold, bold italic, uh, big font, uh, you know, just different things about different styles, different tags that are being used. So you'll be given, you know, a little piece of code and you'll be told, well, what does this do? So it's not, not a bad idea to know what it does. And it's not also a bad idea to know the different sections of the HTML in terms of its structure, the structured page. The head section, the meaning of that, contains the tags to display the title page, excuse me, the page title. Um, display, uh, the title is displayed at the top of the window, not on the page. So it affects, uh, in fact, most of the head's information affects the browser, not necessarily the page. So knowing, you know, what, what, it, what those things are doing. In fact, here's the title tag right here. <coughs> Uh, the body section and knowing what the body section is doing uh, contains instructions for the actual page itself uh, inside the body section. Uh, the graphics, the links, the tables, stuff like that. Uh, text related tags. Uh, so we have uh, the ones that are dealing with text. Uh, we have the P for paragraphs, the BR for line break. Um, and just returning, you know, the concept of just typing in stuff and pressing the return key is not actually going to put it in the code for you. You actually have to put, use the tag for a line return, stuff like that. And the uh, italics, the bold italics, bold tags like that, kind of common tags. The underline, the font. Um, <laughs> you know, you'll see a text displayed in large print, the H1, H2, H3. Uh, knowing the order of, uh, you know, the bigger the number, the smaller, the um, the the size of the text uh, in terms of, of what I, the larger the header tag is, H1, larger numbers make smaller headers. So bigger numbers make bigger headers. <laughs> is that correct? No, it's the other way around. H1 is the biggest. H1 is the biggest and we go smaller with the bigger number. Yes. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> All right. That even trips me up occasionally. I don't know why they did that. Because you think the bigger the number, the bigger the size. But it's, I always remember it's the exact opposite of what I would normally, intu intuition would actually tell me. Like H1 would be like the smallest, but it's really the biggest. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did think about that again. Yeah, I did say that right. Uh, center. In terms of the center tag, uh, the, line, the lines, the concept of there being a line, HR, horizontal rule. The image tag, there's a couple questions on the image. Uh, the image tag itself used to display the graphics with a source. And image maps are also on there as well. Um, I tried to pick a good selection of the tags to kind of quiz you on, you know, the differences between the tags. And I ended up kind of putting in a couple on the images, which was um, you know, kind of interesting. You know, it's, it's more higher level than some of the other tags. Um, here we have the image source, me.jpg. What kind of images can you use with HTML? There's a question on that as well. You know, can you put a BMP image on an HTML page? No, you can't. It's JPEG images. Can you put a, you know, a, I don't know, some weird other, you know, GIF, non-GIF. So. JPEG, GIF indicate types of images that are appropriate for web pages. I think the question is probably going to throw it like either a .bmp or something else and tell you, will that work on a web page? And you'll go, no, <laughs> hopefully. Because the, the tag itself will be correct. It's just a, using the wrong kind of image. <laughs> 
the little trippy stuff like that. Uh, the concept of lists and creating lists in uh, HTML, the ordered list, the unordered list, the dictionary. Here we have the list items that are in the ordered or the unordered list. Uh, that you know those particular options. The concept of nesting lists inside of lists. Here's a list example using an unordered list where we've got the bullets, the bullets that come out on an unordered list. List items uh, give us our items in the list. So the unordered list is the bullet. The ordered list is going to be numbers, characters. However, we set the uh, the set the starting point. We don't have to start with one or a either. We can start with different numbers. Uh, here's the ordered list: one, two, three. And here's another list where we have type is equal to A. So we have capital A, B, C instead of by default the numbers 1, 2, 3. I'm not going to ask you what the default values are, but know that you can change the list by setting the type differently. So, uh, Information about links also will be on the exam. All the links used on the tag for A space H reference, so anchors. For links themselves, links. Uh, if you remember, we did links within the same page to bring us to different spots in the page. <coughs> we also did uh, hyperlinks to take us to other pages, other websites. Um, so all the different ways you can do a, use a link. And uh, let's see, each reference part of it is going to give us our web address. A couple of examples of the actual message themselves uh, between the. Uh, the A tags, you know, the go back, actually being able to put in, let's say, for example, words in the link rather than just using the link URL. So the ability to do that here, where you got to go back here. You're just going to be given a little bit of line of code and, and you know, might ask them, what gets printed to the screen? You know, here, go back would actually be on the screen, but this home.htm is not going to be on the screen. It's going to be hidden and when you click on go back takes you to that anchor that's specified. Ah, and here's some links that take you to CSU Hayward. <laughs> Actually, this particular link. <clears throat> I should change that to I2. <laughs> <But, laughs> um, it's another example in terms of uh, using a web address instead of a page. Uh, you know that you don't actually have to put in the full um, relative, or excuse me, the full absolute address. You can put it in relative addresses if you want. It depends on where it's located. If it's located in the current directory, you could just put the name of a file if you wanted to, the name of an HTML file, along with the HTML extension. Um, and it will actually find the file that is also case sensitive. Remember that part as well. Um, so here's the address. I can uh, find a file like home.html. Uh, it's going to be somewhere. And what if you click on, uh, it's quite often text, it doesn't have to be, it can be whatever you put in between the H reference, you can make a picture clickable. So you can place an image tag between the A tags, <coughs> making the image into a link. So you click on the image and it takes you to the website instead of go here or go back or something. And here's an example below of an image called from uh, toy.jpg, so it links to a page called toystory.htm and you can see the image is in here uh, it gets loaded with an image source when you click on the image it takes you to the URL so it's a nice way of creating like little fancy image buttons and things for navigation <coughs> you can put in the height, the width, the border information regarding the image in terms of the parameter I'm not going to quiz you on all the different parameter settings for everything but it's something like an image you should be familiar with the height and the width Maybe a border style. And for tables, the table row, <laughs> the header of the table, table header, you know, things of that nature. The common ones that you've been using in your assignments um, are the ones we're interested in. And the concepts regarding and the questions regarding the image maps are concept based. There's no source code examples given to you, or you won't have to know how to do the source code from an image map, but the concept of it, what it does, is uh, important to know. So here's a, a list of links themselves, so combining an a anchor um, with a list item in an unordered list in this particular example. So combining elements together. And then uh, also the colors is used in HTML, the foreground color, background color of a page as an example, text color. 
So when you specify the colors, you're entering in a color by name. We can also put in the numbers that are associated with the, co with the color. So you can put in codes that specify the amount of red, blue, and green. Excuse me, yeah, red, green, and blue. These would be RGB codes for red, blue, and green. Add to include gives you a million different combinations. And here's an example here. Our red, green, and blue. Uh, this is supposed to be the FF0000. <laughs> This is a, a little bit off. In fact, it's up a little bit weird um, on, the, on the slide. Um, I don't believe I'm even going to ask you anything on that, but let me just make sure real quick here. No, you can skip that, actually. You don't need to know the RGB scales of colors, red, green, blue. don't have to know that at all. The question that I ask you, it says to put a color in the background of the page, use the tag dot 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 A through D. Select one of them. So not have a lot of background color before, you know. Change a font color. You would use the tag dot dot dot. Anyway, dot. you pick from a A, B, or C. Actually the test is pretty easy when I think about it. So <laughs> as long as you know basic HTML and CSS stuff, it's pretty easy. Uh, here's some more color information. <coughs> you can actually skip this. You don't have to know the hexadecimal colors. But if you're interested in using it, it might not be a bad idea. You can download the slice set, take a look at it, experiment with some of the color codes if you'd like. Uh, but you don't have to know that for the exam. Um, here's, our, here's our color for our background. The background color is specified in the body tag. So, for example, set the background color of the page to light blue. Body space BG color is equal to light blue. And we would set the background color light blue. You can also set the link color if you'd like to the text color of the whole page in the body tag. So here's a tag that sets the background color to yellow, the text to red, and the links to blue for the visited sites and the ones you've already uh, been seen are in purple. Those are the non uh, the visited links are in purple. So here's the body, background color yellow, text is red, link is blue, visited link is purple. So I'm going to give you an example of how to set color on the page. Uh, then we also have font sizes that we can check. So knowing that the header tag uh, makes the large sizes H1 through H6 as we've seen before. You can also specify the font in the font tag, the size of the text. And you can use things like uh, small, bold, big. You can use built-in words, or colors, or sizes. So font size is equal to 1 is indicating not necessarily an inch or a meter. The 1 is a built-in, you know, it's probably, what, 10 or 11 point or something. <laughs> so it's a built-in defined number scale that's associated with a certain font size. And you go 1, 2, 3, it makes it bigger with increments of the numbers. So. Which, again, is kind of counterintuitive because you think that... Uh, Font size 6, you know, if you're doing headers, you know, H6 would be bigger, <laughs> but it's not. So, well, on the headers it's not, but the fonts it is. So. Okay, more, a little bit more about images. So the web page images are displayed on the left side of the page in their actual stored size unless they are otherwise instructed. So unless you actually give the size of the image, it goes to the left justification. So left-hand corner of the page, upper left-hand, zero, zero coordinate. Uh, the height and the width of the image can be specified with the image tag. Height and width are measured in pixels. You don't really need to know that, but it's probably good to do no, well, at least no pixels by walking away from this class. <laughs> so, yes, things are measured in pixels. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so the example here displays the graphic file, my uh, picture.gif with the height 100 pixels, and the width is 50 pixels here. So now if you don't specify the height and width, the image will appear in the size at which it was stored. So you get the stored size of that image and not necessarily the desired size that you're looking for. So, Which is interesting. A lot of people, they go and they spend so much time resizing that image in, you know, like with the image itself. They just specify the height and the width in the HTML tag and then you don't have to resize the image. Uh, so then to align the image uh, at the center to the right of the screen, it's easiest to use the center, the right tags. Image tag is placed between the alignment. So center, then we have the image in the middle. So we can use center, things like that as well. If you want to put a border or a frame around it, we can say border is equal to a thickness in pixels. So everything is measured in pixels, so border here is equal to 3. 
pixels. Uh, so there's an example of the image called uh, Bog. I guess that's Dog. No, Dob. Bog. <laughs> Bog did that GIF, <laughs> which is centered, displayed 200 by 200 with a four pixel border. Bog is uh, okay, interesting. You think Dog? Dog. If there was a B, a D, Dog. Bog. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so if you learned uh, about graphics, it can be links, image maps, is a concept of taking an image itself and creating several different zones in it, or maps, and then assigning different links to those maps, or zones, coordinates. So the coordinates within the image are used to map various different areas in the image. And here's an example here, where we've got uh, two areas that might be ears.htm, so you can click here and they'll bring up an ear, and here's some feet. It might be arms, body. So each area could be a separate link, essentially. So you can see an image with its map. So it kind of looks like this, if you look at it visually. Each area is defined by coordinates. And uh, for the rectangle, the upper left to the lower right-hand corner. So it goes left to right. So this corner here to this corner here is our dimensions for the particular area that we're interested in mapping to a particular link or something. We don't have to put a link on there. We could play a sound. We could do any, any anything essentially uh, associated with an anchor. So, so the HTML code uh, to make an image map begin with the image tag. So we have image source it's pig. Is this a pig? It is a pig. <laughs> Pig.gif. And uh, use, use map. And then we have the map number mig map for it, pig, pig, mig. And so the uh, use map says that the graphic is an image map. And uh, mig is the name of the uh, map definition, and this means look in the same document. This is the same thing we used for um, essentially tags, for anchor points within the same document, it's always that hash sign. It says it's local, look for it there. So in terms of the image map definition, it begins with the image map name. So we have the map name is equal to MIG, and then underneath it we have the code. So the name is the image map definition. And then the closing map ends the definition. Everything we put in there is our definition, which is our coordinates, essentially. So the lines between are going to have our coordinates in there. And the instructions for what the link should do when you click on there. So the anchor information as well. So the lines in between map name is equal to mig and map defined area one tag uh, for each area and you can put multiple areas in there which means like the left and the right ear can be both part of that same ear tag uh, so area shape is going to be equal to whatever you mentioned wanted a circle rectangle and uh, reference is going to be feet as an example coordinates are going to basically give us our coordinate system i'm not going to ask you uh, about coordinates I'm not going to ask you about mapping. It's the concept of the image map itself that the question pertains to and not um, actually in the creation of it. So um, let me just make sure. The code for it. No, you don't have to know the code that's associated with an image map. So you can erase that from your memory if you want. <laughs> don't have to know anything that's on the last couple slides I just gave you. <laughs> Not bad to know in the future, though, if you won't ever use it. So, How can I find the coordinates? Well, you can search for shareware sites if you wanted to. There's image map programs that allow you to put the mouse down, and it'll capture the mouse movement and tell you how big the coordinate area is or how big to make the map. So you can move the course. Move the mouse through the picture. So, so moving right along, the concept of frames is also on the exam. The frame set document uses the frame set opening and closing tags inside of the body, opening and closing tags, type of frames, rows and columns must be set and described inside of the frame tag. So content one.html, borders equal to zero, no resize would be an example in terms of a frame. And here we have a classic example of a left and a right kind of navigation type of frame. The concept of frame and frame sets are uh, or part of the exam. Let me just take a look here. I'm trying to make sure I cover all of the questions. Uh, there's no source code related to the frame set question either. 
So you won't have to look at source code for that. It's just the concept of the frame. So I do see a question about emailing from a web page, though, just in case I forget to mention that. I'm not sure if I have it in the review. But uh, how to send an email message from a web page. Mail to link. <laughs> so, uh, so. Uh, so here's the uh, frame set in terms of defining the columns and putting pages, uh, assigning each, each frame to a particular page so the page is displayed. Here's some sample code for that. As I mentioned before, you don't have to know the code. But, uh. So here's a self-check example question. Which one of the following is not a required tag? Huh. So we got HTML, we got forward, so we got the closing tag for bold, header one, and head. The answer would be H1. <laughs> so the heading and the headings are common but not required in an HTML document. This is these are actual questions, not questions that are on the exam, but actual questions that I've used from the same from the same pool, from the same list. So the questions, these are very similar in wording and in like nature um, in terms of what you're going to get. So, And uh, not required tag means it doesn't have to be in every HTML document. So we have some required tags and we have some that aren't required. Um, here's another one. So which of the tags below will show the words my page on a page in very large type? Uh, maybe I should have numbered them. <laughs> uh, that would be title of my page. Uh, no, wait a minute, that doesn't write. H1 shows the largest headline, in the very large type. H1. So that, it looks like the thing got messed up. Look at the explanation, actually, is the better one to look at for the answer. Uh, which set of the tags below uh, would display the text in italics and bold? Click here. Italics and bold. Uh, well, actually, it's this one. Italics and bold. Let's see, open. And the, here, the uh, the trick is the matching of the uh, opening and the closing brackets. Yeah. So don't disregard the uh, the line here. The line here is like the font on here is too big. Is what the problem is. <laughs> the ones with the asterisk next to it are going to be the right answer. And in fact, if you download this and look at it on local system, the number the the bracket actually shows up on the right one. So. Tags must be nested. So you'll see stuff like this. You'll see, oh, look, the, it looks the same, and then people always will argue with me. Isn't it the same? It's A and B. <laughs> no, it's just one, one correct answer in this case. Watch out for the nesting. So to put a blank line after typing, you can go BR, you can go P. Just press return or enter. We know that's not right. Either BR or P will work. So yeah. To put a blank line, either one of them is going to work, actually. So. Which one of the following makes a numbered list? Is it NL for numbered list? <laughs> That's the other thing, too. So I have made up tags. There's no such thing as an NL, by the way. <laughs> ordered list is probably going to be the one. <laughs> so a numbered list is an ordered list. So you'll see some tags. In fact, yeah, believe it or not, how many students when I used to ask this question, would actually mark this one here. <laughs> You'd be like, there's no such thing as the NL tag. And then they argue anyway. So. To draw a line across the web page, that's horizontal rule. Yeah, It's not line. Oops, it's supposed to be down here. <laughs> so this is horizontal rule. It's not line. Line LI. Maybe I should put horizontal line. H maybe H L would be nice for this one. There's actually I've got some funny ones in here. When you look at it, it'll entertain you a little bit. You'll go, I've never seen an N L. We I mean, have never seen that one before. Which of the following displays the words "click me" as a link to the home page? Htm. Oh, how about this one? It's the only one that makes logical sense, right? <laughs> it's supposed to be this one, not this one. It's this one right here. There's no such thing as an LI for link. It's H reference. Uh, which command is used to set the background color of a web page to white? Hmm. Background color is equal to white. How's that one? This is black, actually. And this is none. <laughs> and 
the syntax is correct. Yes. Uh, the other thing too is noticing uh, there'll be a couple questions that'll ask you about XHTML. So you know that you have to use the quotation marks with XHTML. It doesn't matter with HTML. Also, you know you have to have opening and closing brackets for uh, XHTML. So you might have one that says in XHTML, and there'll be one option that has the opening and closing that'll look just like the other one that only has the opening. So then you'll know which one's the right answer. Oh, what I got here? What are following? Uh, which of the following places a graphic called? Oh, here we got dog, not bog again, <laughs> on the web page. Image source. Hmm, dog. Dog, dog, image, image source. See, these two look pretty close. This one doesn't look right at all. That one, image group, doesn't look right either. So it's got to be one or two. So it's going to be the first one. Case must match file name. So if I say dog and I put quotes around it, make sure you pick the option that's in the lower case. <laughs> Won't be this obvious, but it, you know, it might actually in, end up being that obvious in the long run. And that's how you're going to pick the wrong answer by not thinking about things like case sensitivity, XHTML rules, opening, you know, of, of a little, the little nitpick kind of things. Which of the following sets the size of the dog.jpg to 100 by 100? One, two, three. The third one would be right. <laughs> and actually, the thing went down correctly, too. So setting the height and the width. Which of the following creates a link to home.htm by clicking on go home? Well, it's going to be an href. <laughs> it could be that one. could be that one. We're going to click on go home, though. So it would be the second one. It would be that one right there. And which of the following allows the user to click on go home or a graphic home.jpg to go to the go home? Excuse me, go to home.htm. Uh, oh, no, look, they're all starting out the same. Well, that's good. Image. <coughs> go home. Huh. Go home. Image. Go home. What's the difference between these two? Oh, the anchor. Just different order. Or the last one. It's the top one, actually. Yeah source and then we have go home that's printed next to it and there's a typo there's probably a typo and I, let me see, let me see if I typo here well the go home is going to end up last actually the text will end up either graphic first or words first I think that they're both first I'm sure no actually this is this is mixed in so. okay which of the lists below will result from these tags it's an ordered list that looks like and list item is a mind on each time see me there's a list item and then we got go away another list item so see me looks like a link go away yeah, it's the second item because there's no link on the third so it's the second there you go oh, that's my box actually worked <laughs> so which is the correct text placement if the tag is used? Uh, image source equals SOS. Align is equal to top. Uh, sync. Top alignment right here. Yeah, first one. So the alignment's at the top. So you have sync that's uh, aligned to it correctly. So to use a graphic back one dot gif as a page background, you would use which one of the following tags? Body background. Hmm. Body. Body background color. <laughs> now that you're using the body background. So it would be the first one. <laughs> so the color would be although it's a nice tag, it doesn't use a you can't use a back you know people have actually said this, you can't use a graphic as a background. <laughs> you can. So. The background graphic is smaller than the page uh, display. The image is displayed larger to fill the window, or the image is centered on the page window, or the image is titled, backwards. repeated. Backwards. It's, the, it's the last one, actually. It's titled. So, yeah. This should be down here on this one. It's repeated. I uh, use an image lineup. That GIF does a line. 
to use the image as a line, use the following tags. We use image source. Here's a, this is the one that doesn't even have a line horizontal rule next to it. We have that one. Which guys? Which one do you think? This one? <laughs> no, it's the one above it. To use it in the line itself, you'd have the horizontal rule, then you have the image itself with the image source. It's this should be at one. So yeah. Which of the following graphic formats uh, would need to be converted before using it on a web page? I gave that one away already. <laughs> All three of them on the bottom. You can't use a TIFF, you can't use a BMP, and you can't use a PIC. So you'll need to convert it. And don't argue with me, because <laughs> so, people say, "Oh, you can you, you can load this browser plugin that will read the BMP image." Now, for the purposes of this class and this exam, don't think about any you know ways of making it work with a plugin. <laughs> think about you know native HTML code. So. And the native, the GIF and the JPEG are the only two that are going to work, and that could be JPEG as well or JPEG. An image map is. A GIF that shows a map of a country. Hmm, that sounds interesting. A graphic that links to several different web pages. Ooh, maybe. A graphic that links to a single web page. No, there is no such thing. It's this one here. <laughs> it's the second one. Oh, which of the following tags shows a rectangle area linking to home.htm with coordinates, blah, 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 blah. Coordinates, coordinates. Area. Are these the same? All right, let's see what the solution says. The second one, I don't notice the difference between the two of them. Oh, there's a comma here. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> there's no comma. There's no comma, by the way. <laughs> so don't worry. The second one is correct. You don't put commas in between it. End of the review. Okay, so that's enough of that. These are fun questions, all right? So the exam will be fun. Those are the same kind of questions that you're going to see in the exam. You're going to see 22 of those questions. Only four of them were on CSS. And I practically read you the questions that were on CSS. No questions on JavaScript at all. No programming required. But you will have to look at HTML questions like you just looked at a few minutes ago and answer whether or not the code is correct or not, or which code does this or which code does that. So similar to self-check questions, they're not the same as the self-check questions. So don't complain if you don't see the same questions. <laughs> uh, but that's for the same kind of pool. It comes from the same, like, I have like a base of like 200 of those questions or so, and I rotate the questions around. So Those are very similar in nature. So they're asking, you know, and you can see how they can just, like, they trip you up on, you know, putting a comma in, leaving out something, case sensitivity, stuff like that. So it's pretty much the nature. Questions, comments, concerns? So to answer about 25 of those, or 22 of those, would take you, what, an hour or less? Most of you will probably finish within a half an hour, I suspect. So it's not what I would call a labor-intensive exam. Now is your opportunity to ask questions. Is such and such on the exam? Is such and such on the exam? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no questions? We're all good? I know. It's a, probably the easiest exam I've ever given for this class, I think, actually. And after now, I'm looking at it. Now I'm feeling bad. Maybe I should make it harder. No. I'll give you guys a break. <laughs> so. No, when you walk away from it, you'll go, that was an easy exam. So. This was a very easy exam. So unless we have any questions, we're actually done for today. So you can take the exam next Monday, or you can take it the following Monday. Or you can take it on the Wednesdays. Don't ask me to take it on the weekends. It's on a Monday or a Wednesday for the next two weeks. Yep. So if you don't have any questions, we're done. See you next time for the exam. So we're all done with the class, actually. So I finished all the lectures for the course. Now you just have to come in and take the exam, so there's no class next week outside of taking the exam. Okay.